Good evening. My name is G. Trulia. My name is Eric Dibner. And we're here from TST to show you air fuel ratio sensor. And Eric, we're working on what? A 2013? 100. With a 5.7. 5.7 in it. Now we got a couple of tools, and if you guys have been watching us, you know the Technician's Choice Award. A couple of the tools that we're going to be using different tools in different videos. We have the new Launch X431 pad, real nice, and we have the Fluke 233A meter, and you notice this has a removable head. It's not the guy in the camera losing his mind. It's a removable head, here's the rest of the meter, and we can stick it just like that. Now, let's explain what we have. Pierre, if you could zoom in on that, that is the meter hooked up to the air fuel ratio sensor wires in series. Yes. This is the sensor wire, right, Eric? Yes, it is. Okay. We have the scan tool with the wireless piece inside on the OBD2 connector. And I'd like Pierre to come in right on the screen here because here's what we have. Objective air fuel ratio, 0.99. The actual air fuel, bank one sensor one, 0 0.99. The air fuel sensor voltage, bank one sensor one, 3.29. Now usually 3.3, 3, 2.9. 3, 3, 3, 2, 3, 2, 9, 1, That's perfect. And look at our milliamps of amperage is zero, just like our meter. Okay. Now this means we are in fuel control. So Pierre is going to come over here. I'm going to take over at the camera for a little bit. And this is going to be plotted. And Eric is going to get in the vehicle. And you're going to start seeing yellow is going to be our air fuel ratio objective. Blue is the air fuel ratio bank one sensor one um, actual. The air fuel ratio voltage, there's the 3.3 with very little dithering. Remember, this is not like an oxygen sensor where it's going to go up and down a lot. That is very, very little movement. And here's our current. Our current's going to dip a little bit. If you look at the scale, it's from zero to a negative uh, zero point, let's see that, nine one. So very, very small. And our meter is showing us nothing, but wait until Eric gets in there. And Pierre, you can go look over there. Hello, everybody. So, in case you forgot what Pierre looks like, he's going to be doing the point then now. Eric's in the vehicle. Now you'll see the meter responds a little more quickly than the scan tool. And look at that meter response. You see that, that one? response is very short. He's not going up a hill pulling, you know, constant enrichment. But that's a very small change. And now you can see that the scan tool has caught up with it. The reason for that, of course, is it takes a little while for the scan tool to uh, update from the computer and, and put it out on the screen for you. And this has nothing to do with the scan tool being you know, slow or anything like that. This is actually what would happen even if you had the factory tool on it. That's right. It's basically how the computer in the vehicle uh, collects and then transmits the data out to the scan tool. And you can see our current draw doesn't move a lot. You'll notice it went to a negative one, and we could do min-max in a little bit, but give it, give it some brum, 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 very light, very light brum brums. So what you're doing is giving a TP command and you're going to start seeing numbers change. And you're asking for enrichment basically when it does that. And you can see this on these graphs here. You can see how it's modulating. Even the voltage modulates a little bit, but if you were to look at the scale of this, it's a very small deviation. And notice the current flow really does not move much at all. But watch when Eric gives it a big... Now, it's really quicker than your eye can see. And what we will do is we're going to go in there just a little deeper. You want me to hit min-max? Hit min-max, Pierre. Okay, so now we're doing a min-max. We'll see what the, the real range is. Okay, so smack it up a little bit. Yeah. See, there's a little delay, but then it you know, basically ports that data out to the scan tool. 
And notice now on the meter, we're still, we're at one, we're not at zero anymore, because I bet on the scan tool, we're not at 3.3 volts yet. And I don't know if I could zoom in there more. Uh, it's a little hard to read that, but I'd say we actually are now stable at 3.3. So in other words, you're trying to say you're blind like me. I'm coming I closer. Blind. Yeah, I need to put two things. Okay, now, move let your hand. Let's see. So let's take a better look at that. Make a little adjustment here. And I'm going to zoom in on the green is actually... So the, the one we're looking at. The line above, the grid above is 3.5, the line below, the grid below is 3.0. And the scan tool on the on the car is a little off, it's not our camera angle. Yeah, it's a little but it's sitting a little crooked. It's sitting crooked. I'll try to make an adjustment here, but you get the idea. Now you see how the line is getting straight to the I guess to the right of the screen. You saw the big humps going up and down, if you could point those out, Pierre. Right here, here. Yep. Now that look. Was, that was when the gas was being goosed. Right. Now look to the right. And now it's kind of stable, and it's started a little higher, and it's gradually drifting down to that three three range or a little and less. And hit your min max off now on the meter. Okay. That the minimum was point minus point zero zero one. The max our average was zero, which is what we want, of course. Uh, uh, and now we have a live reading. I, I probably had it locked in. Max is 0 0.001. Minimum negative. negative, the same thing. Average was right down the center. And now it's off again, so we're live. So what we're showing you here is when you use a digital voltmeter in series, amperage. meaning amperage, we open the circuit up. And you can tell the scan tool is doing a great job because if we go back down to scan data, amperage is the red one, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah. Uh, sense of current, that's correct. And look at that, it's straight down the center now, the average of zero. Of zero. Yep. So this is a quick way, there's our launch scan tool and our fluke meter. These are two of the tools that we picked and it's a 233A. And notice how that flickered from a negative number there. This is fuel control of an air fuel ratio sensor. And there is our launch scan tool. So, when you're checking it, you can really rely on your scan tool. In case you think you have a problem, you can hook a meter up in series. Some scan tools will also give you a lambda reading. A lambda of one is perfect. Anything above is lean, anything below is rich. And by the way, it's not that it's the scan tool that's giving you the, lam the lambda reading, it's the manufacturer of the vehicle programmed that into their data stream. You bet. So. If now, you have any questions... Now, now it's getting into a mode where it's going a little rich, a little lean. It's pinging itself up and down here. It, it, it did a little test of itself, a little, a, a little sequence, and, and then it'll stabilize. Yep. Um, if, Eric, maybe you can have it up to 2,000 and hold it for a little bit. So now we're going to race it up? Race it up, but not like soaring it, but more like a high idle cloud. See, now... It works a little bit, but what you'll see is it'll steady out the current. It's a lot more steady signal than we had before because it's not constantly asking for enrichment and then leaning it out. But even though there's little blips in it, it's a much more even signal all the way across. And we're mostly looking at the green screen on the bottom. That's right, that's the voltage. And, and the, the red screen. And this indicates the current that it's waiting to get that mixture. And notice the meter up top, we're staying at zero. Right. Because really that's about what you're reading. Yeah, because it's basically it's, up, it's operating right down the center. Very and a big, a big question asked is, how come I can't use my amp clamp? And the answer is... The answer is, is it's too low a number. It's so small a number that the amp clamp just can't read down at that level. The interference from your shop lights will, is, is more. Exactly. Now, not to say you can't buy a very, very expensive amp clamp that leads, reads in microamps, right. but there's no need for that. Even that, I would suspect with all the interference in a shop, you might have problems getting an accurate number out of that. Those things usually clamp tightly on the wire instead of just having a whole a, a, a sensor around it. And so, probably not a good thing for the shop. In wrapping it up, there's Eric in the back, Pierre. NG and myself.
And we just showed you, using the launch, new X431 pad, and the fluke meter, and you could use whatever you have, but these were two of the top 10 tools again that we picked. You could diagnose air fuel ratio sensors without a problem. That's right. Thank you, and if you have any comments, we'll get back to you.